What's going on everybody? Sean Ross here and welcome back to the channel guys and I am here to give you guys my thoughts and review on the latest chapter of My Hero Academia chapter 202 which is entitled Match Number 3. And with this title it's kind of misleading because technically the third match does not kick off this chapter. It's going to officially kick off next chapter in chapter 203 but we mainly get to see the setup to what we can expect for match number three between Todoroki's team and Tetsu Tetsu's team. But with the setup that we do get, there's going to be some interesting developments that we are going to get for match number three, and that has me very excited. But before we actually dive in and talk about the content of chapter 202, I think most of you are already aware of this fact, but I am recording this review the day that we were supposed to get a new My Hero Academia chapter, but it is on break this week. Horikoshi is finally getting a much deserved break after you can kind of tell the man was kind of getting a little tired, time was catching up to him. The last couple chapters in page length were kind of lacking. We had 11 to 13, maybe a 15 page chapter. So I am glad that Horikoshi is getting this break to where he can just kind of reinvigorate himself, get back to a normal pacing, so that way, once we have chapter 203 come out next week, it will be a normal chapter, hopefully about 17 pages, and then Horikoshi will just be back on track, delivering us plus ultra chapter. So, hope everything is going okay with Horikoshi. But with that out of the way, let's talk about the content of this chapter because this chapter, like I stated, is mainly set up going into the third match, which will kick off in chapter 203. But I like the setup that I am seeing because there was a theme this chapter with living up to expectations that we got to see correlated between Tokoyami, Todoroki, and Ida that I liked getting to see, plus getting to see Ida possibly getting some screen time and some shine during this next match has me very excited because let's be honest, it's been a long time since Ida has kind of been a main character, or at least a main side character, to where he shared some of the spotlight, so I'm curious to see the developments we're going to get with Ida there. And also that flashback that we have with Todoroki training with Endeavor, the name drop of Toyo once again, fueling those Dobby theories, and then also teasing this new move that Todoroki is definitely most likely going to use during this third match. That right there. Everything with Todoroki being set up, I think we expected he was going to be a major part of this third match. But with the developments I am seeing, I am very excited to see what's going to go down with Todoroki throughout this third match. But the main reason reason I have always been excited for these matches going from match number one to number two and now number three is to learn the quirks of class B and just learn more about their characters. We have Tetsu Tetsu who we already know plenty about. We have Juzo who we saw back at the sports festival and was also brought in via recommendation like Todoroki and the only unknown factors for me within this next match is Senkaibara and Pony who have the quirks of Gyrate and Horn Cannon respectively. But the one I'm looking forward to most is Pony because I kind of view her as the dark horse of this match. She's very cute, adorable, and innocent, but with a quirk name like Horn Cannon, it has to be powerful. So I am going to be keeping my eyes on Pony throughout this third match. I am very excited to finally see her in action. So with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive in and let's talk about this chapter and let's go all the way back to page one because the start of this chapter is still dealing with the aftermath and the resolution of what went down in match number two. As we come to see, we see that Kanoko is kind of tending to Tokoyami just a little bit and I find this rather funny because she is the main reason Tokoyami is choking on mushrooms in his esophagus and she's offering up to him a throat lozenge to make him feel better. I just find that panel really, really funny. And plus the fact that Tokoyami's like, I don't need your pity is just spot on for a response by Tokoyami. But then we also come to see that Momo is also being wheelchaired out of there towards Recovery Girl. So she is definitely feeling the fatigue of creating all of those items and also going up against Kendo throughout that second match. But the environment as well has also taken a beating. And I kind of like that this gets brought up within the chapter because this kind of goes all the way back to the first battle training when All Might was scolding Bakugo for destroying the stronghold that the villains were supposed to defend. And we see that Vlad and Aizawa kind of scold Fugadashi and Kendo for destroying the environment. And I just like that that was consistent going from the first battle training exercise 
coming to this one. But because it's so damaged, Aizawa's like, okay, we need to kind of change locations right now before we dive into our third matchup. So there's kind of like a waiting period as they're trying to prepare the environment to move to a new sector. That way, Todoroki's team and Tetsu Tetsu's team can fight in a fresh and brand new environment. But it's during that waiting period, we have this little section between Deku and All Might talking with each other, but then also including Bakugo as well. And it's with this brief section and conversation taking place between these three where it really brings you back to chapter 120 and 121 to where Bakugo finally learned the secret of One for All and learned about the relationship between All Might and Deku and why Deku was picked to be the next successor. Because even though Bakugo enters this conversation, this is the first time that he is actually being included since those chapters. And even though Bakugo is being his typical angry self, he's lashing out and yelling at All Might and Deku, He's actually concerned in his own way, and I like getting to see that, and plus having him included is just really awesome to see after that conversation that took place so many chapters ago. Him being worried about the power of One for All, and also being worried with the fact that All Might and Deku are talking about this while not even 10 feet away from him, you have all of Class A and Class B who could possibly overhear this conversation. I mean, you have Jiro and Shoji over there who are experts in reconnaissance. They could most likely hear every word that Deku and All Might are talking about, but right now they're more concerned with planning their matches. But another little thing that this section does to remind us once again is that Deku is going up against Shinzo in the fifth match. This is just a little thing that we have to keep in the back of our mind because I think everyone is looking forward to once we get to the fifth match, what's going to go down because Shinzo is going to be a big factor in that match, but I also view Monoma as a very big wild card as well. Those are my two that I think everyone should keep an eye on once we get to the fifth match, but I'll talk more about that once we actually get closer to the fifth match because right now we still have the third match and the fourth match to go through until we can even start worrying about what's going to happen in the fifth match, but I like the fact that this little section brings that up with All Might, just letting Deku know once again, just be aware of Shinzo, but also all Might saying, I'm going to go talk with Gran Torino and see if he knew anything about my master talking about these vestiges or these visions. So this little conversation, this little section right here was very nice to have with Bakugo, Deku, and All Might. And as we move forward from this section, we begin to dive into the setup leading into the third match where we come to see the lineups of Class B's team and Class A's team. And this is where we begin to dive into the theme that I really did notice of living up to expectations with Tokoyami Todoroki, and Ida. So after Tokoyami was able to clear his throat of all of the shrooms, he ends up walking towards Todoroki and ends up mentioning how shameful of a display he put on during that second match and ends up telling Todoroki, it's all up to you now. And Todoroki staring at him blankly like, what are you talking about? Why me? And then Tokoyami proceeds to talk about Endeavor and Hawks and basically bringing up the concept of living up to legacy and expectations and how we kind of represent the reputation of the number one and number two pro hero. Tokoyami interned under Hawks and is kind of therefore held to a different pedigree and standard than a lot of other heroes in training. He interned under the number two pro hero, and the fact that he lost in that second match kind of damages the reputation of Hawks just a little bit. And the same thing kind of be said for Todoroki to where he has always been referred to as the son of Endeavor, and Endeavor is now the number one pro hero, and that's a lot to live up to. That just puts a huge burden and stress on Todoroki even more. And you can even see Ida in a very small panel listening in on this conversation but I'll talk about Ida in just a little bit. Just focusing in on Todoroki, this ends up kind of triggering within him to think back to Endeavor's fight against the Nomu, that awesome little mini arc that we had, but then we also even go back even further within this flashback of Todoroki training under Endeavor. This is after the incident with Rei, you can see the scar on his face, but we get some little tidbits dropped within this flashback that I absolutely love because as we come to find out, Todoroki was not the first prodigy that Endeavor was kind of grooming to be his successor. Toya gets mentioned within this flashback, and as we come to find out, he was the prodigy child before Todoroki, and his firepower was greater than Endeavor's, but he had the same constitution as Rei's. So that information is just adding more fuel to the fire with the Dobby fan theories. And I just love just getting to see Horikoshi just throwing those nuggets within here. But then we also get the tease 
of this new technique that only Todoroki is able to use. So we can basically come to the conclusion that we are going to see this technique in some way, shape, or form in this upcoming match. And I'm very curious as to why it's only Todoroki. Does it involve fire and ice? Is it just an ice move? And why was he training Toya and is it a connection to Davi or anything? I don't really know, but I just love the fact that we have this very brief flashback and just goes to show that the burden of being the son of Endeavor still weighs heavily on Todoroki. And I love that aspect of Todoroki's character, the fact that he is very powerful, very OP, but the way that you restrain him is having all of this baggage from his past. I love getting to see that. So moving away from the flashback, we then move into Ida's section. And I love having this section because let's be honest with Ida's character. He kind of has not been relevant since the Stain arc. I like Ida as a character, but he really has not gotten development since the Stain arc. And the fact that we are seeing this from him within this section, him talking about his older brother Tensei, how he's getting better, but how he also wants to live up to the reputation and the legacy of the name Ingenium. I am curious to see the developments that we are going to see with Ida's character within this matchup because it's been a long time since we've seen Ida in action and I want to see him teaming up with Todoroki, with Ojiro, and also with Shoji. So the fact that Horikoshi is teasing this up with Ida just adds more excitement to the matchup that we will be getting. So great stuff with Todoroki, with Ida, this reputation, the legacy and living up to expectations. I like getting to see that. But then we kind of move into the last section of this chapter where we kind of go over to class B and see how they are preparing for their matchup. And we have Tetsu Tetsu basically saying he's not the smartest man out there. He's not the brightest bulb in the bunch, but he is here for a reason. He wants to be a pro hero and he's going to do anything to do that. And of course, as soon as Vlad and Aizawa got done lecturing everyone about not destroying the environment, we come to see our metal boy, Tetsu Tetsu, right before the match is about to begin, start obliterating and destroying the environment around him. He is leveling the playing field, literally getting rid of all the metal, all the pipes, making it a very barren and desolate area that they have to fight in to where you're just staring back and forth with your opponents. And I know this might be viewed as idiotic. Why would he just be destroying the environments? Why is he doing this after Vlad and Aizawa told him not to do this? But in his own way, he's trying to play to his team's advantage to where he's getting rid to where any tricks or schemes can be pulled. There's gonna be no areas where you can hide in and you just have to get up close and personal and fight back against your opponents. So in that sense, it's very smart that he's doing this, but I honestly think he should have consulted with the rest of his team because looking at the reaction, they're like, wait a minute, dude, what are you doing? Because Kaibara is like, you do realize that they have Todoroki on their team right now. And even Pony starts speaking English, you know, the fact that she's an American foreign exchange student. She's also kind of upset with the fact that, you know, he didn't share any of this as he proceeded to do it. The only person that's kind of chill and relax is Juzo. And I guess that just kind of goes with his quirk. He's very nonchalant, very soft in a way. So he's just kind of going with the flow. He's like, don't worry, this is going to play to our strengths. We're flexible, we can do this. So he's the positive one of the group. And he's also the one that got in on recommendation, very similar to Todoroki. So I'm wondering if we're going to get a matchup between these two. But that right there basically brings us to the ending of this chapter to where we see Class A line up Todoroki, Ojiro, Shoji, and Ida getting ready to go up against Class B. And I'm very excited to see what's going to go down with this third matchup. So I'm very curious to hear from you guys. Like, which team do you guys expect to come out on top in this match? I know we still have two unknown factors with Class B, but with everything that we know right now, I kind of feel like Class A with Todoroki, they are going to come out on top in this match. They are most likely going to win. But if they end up losing this match, I'm very curious to see what's going to be the main factor to cause them to lose. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, that right there is my review to chapter 202 of My Hero Academia. But now I definitely wanna hear your guys' thoughts on this chapter. What were your positives? What were your negatives? And what was your favorite moment from this chapter? And what are your thoughts going into this third matchup? How do you think it's going to play out? And which team do you have coming out on top? Is it going to be class A or class B? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below, guys, and feel free to leave a like if you think I deserved it. Subscribe to the channel so that we can talk more about my hero, and feel free to follow me on Twitter. A link to my Twitter account can be found in the description down below. 
But that's going to do it for me here, guys. So until next week, when we have chapter 203 of My Hero Academia and the official start of match number three, I'll talk to you guys next time. But remember, go beyond, plus ultra.